we're starting a homestead out here. This is Alaska, South Central. My name's Hunter. I'm born and raised in Alaska from Fairbanks. This is what it looks like to see what I do every day. Now you can see kind of more It's a 16 by 16 um, frame of the bo bottom of the cabin. And the uh, method we're using is called a couple of different things. You can find it as post and beam. Some people call it um, tongue and groove post method. Uh, well, we found it on YouTube and there's a guy from Europe called his channel's called Project Highlander and he calls this the Highlander method. Awesome, awesome log work. Like career log builder kind of guy. And so this is how you do it. You have a large groove that you have to cut into the post and then your log is cut into a tongue and it fits right in there. And then, when you're ready to make your next section, you cut all of the logs from the top that are facing, making your wall. You cut them into a tongue, and you groove your post, just like the other one that we just looked at. You can see there's a big post with a big groove in it. So now this wall is at complete height. And I'll back up because I think this looks weird. So this wall, this wall here is at eight feet high from where the floor is gonna start down here. And now, right now, today, I'm working on this wall over here still, and I'm getting these logs, and we're going up. So, I'm gonna set the tripod up, and off we go. Next move is right here is what we're gonna do to the log to make it like those logs is we gotta cut the sides off each side so it's nice and flat or as you know close as we can get it because it's a chainsaw so let's face it it's gonna be not like dimensional lumber it's a nice way to say it but I have a draw knife I like to fix it a little bit afterwards if I mess it up I'm doing my best I'm not a woodworker not a log worker so this is my first time building a cabin and I'm just learning how to do it as I go other than watching these videos and learning from those people so what they show you to do is you take this guy here square and hold it against the edge of the log and you come in a half an inch and you make a mark right a half inch and then you can do the same thing you know try not to move it and you go right back here and you go 
the same thing and make a mark right half inch so then take the level a nice little mini level like this is pretty handy for this and you just draw your line up same thing on this side And for those of you who haven't figured it out already, yes, I am left-handed. I will be seen doing many things backwards. I will also be seen doing things right-handed. It's just a weird thing that it is. It's just like it is to be left-handed. Other lefties will know what I'm saying. I know you're out there. So we get our line going up, and we just kind of transfer it on the top a little bit so we can see it from the top. And then, I'm going to go down here and do the same thing on this end. Well, let's talk about how I'm going to side this log. How I'm going to side this log came after a lot of trial and error. I first started doing it, I tried to do it by hand. At that point, because we tried to build an outhouse, or we did build part of an outhouse, we just didn't finish it over there. Um, and when we were doing that, it was the first time I'd ever used a chainsaw that wasn't involving cutting trees down for firewood or cutting trees up for firewood. Up until this point in my life, I've never actually used a chainsaw to actually like construct anything or build anything um, ever. So basically I went through <laughs> my best try to do this essentially right off the bat. And I did, I mean, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It was just horrible. It would come out, you know, angled and crooked and, and really just um, nowhere near what you need. So then I went down the road of getting the little mini mill situations where you can buy the little adapter that goes in your chainsaw and then you put a little two by four down your, down your log and then you cut down this two by four we bought a cheap one from Amazon and it was just junk and it was really hard to use because it kept coming apart or coming crooked and it wouldn't stay tight and it would catch on the 2x4 or it would rock on the 3x4 and it didn't make a straight cut. So then we spent a little more money and got the really nice name brand mill that you use for siding logs. Um, made by <coughs> Granberg and Granberg makes, you know, mid chainsaw mills and all kinds of stuff and they make an awesome product and I used it a few times um, same thing though setting it up is kind of a pain and it did do a way better job and was way more consistent than the other one from Amazon but at the same time I wasn't getting it perfect even with the mill so I decided one day a couple few weeks ago that I would try this again and see if I could do a better job after having much more practice with the chainsaw. And so I found that with the freehand chainsaw situation that I used two different chainsaws to do it. I used my small electric one, which this thing, you know, I really love this chainsaw. I'm holding it with one finger. It is light, it is nimble, it is everything one could want in a small lightweight chainsaw. It's completely electric, all it has is a battery. You add the bar oil here, and that's all you gotta worry about. My wife can use it to cut firewood and stuff. She loves it, it's easy to use, it's, it's great. But it's so nice and light that I like to use it not to side the log, because I don't wanna damage my little chainsaw. But I'll use it to you know, just make my initial groove down the line because it's so much lighter and easier to handle that it makes it easy to make the groove nice and straight. And then I switch over to my larger chainsaw. That's not a very, it's not a really big chainsaw, but it is a 
much more powerful than this 45 cc Husqvarna 20 inch bar chainsaw whereas this is only a 16 inch bar and the power of electric I need to get that chainsaw there we go. okay now this is a chainsaw we use to side it right here you can see that okay that is the larger chainsaw I'm referring to. This is not our largest chainsaw we have here on the homestead, but it is good for this. So. some really kind of a bent not bent but kind of a crooked or shape to it so some places where just the line barely touches it so we kind of already have sided parts of it with the little chainsaw but we'll use the big one to finish it screw it, flip it over, screw it back down, clean the bark off the other side, and we're ready to make it into a tongue. You guys having fun so far? Is this, you guys like this? Put a like, put a comment, say hey, this is cool. I wanna say one thing quick. Anybody who moves logs around, I don't care if you do firewood or whatever, you don't have to be building a cabin. This thing right here is made by Fiskars. It is a log, I think they call it the log carrier, maybe? Not sure, but if you just look it up, Fiskars log hook, log grabber, this is, this is it. Um, you can grab the log in these here, and you have a, a ha actual handle to hold on to to pick the log up and then you can kind of balance it and walk with it and I'll see you'll see exactly how that works in a second so here I am log hook for the most part I mean it's not super balanced but you just put your hand here and you can you can move it around you know all you got to do to get it off is just push down and it pops off Super nice tool to have, not very expensive. Um, I'd say it's worth its weight in gold when you're doing something like this where you're moving logs by yourself. You're going to see me mostly by myself here. My wife is at her job. She works five days a week. And the kids are obviously at school. So. Now that goes in the groove and it locks it into the wall and it can't move. All right, you can see me. Check me out here. We got some serious mud. This is breakup, or what you call breakup in Alaska. And you know, that doesn't look too bad right there, right? But you can't really see how deep it is. But let's go out there and look at it. This rut right down here, that's what I got. Yeah, tape measure. 
we want to go down to the bottom of the rut. And that is that right there is about 11 inches deep. That's 11 inches deep of mud and muck. Nasty. So, it's all right. Guess what? Today we're gonna do something new and different. And you say, what? New and different? What could you possibly do when you're building a cabin that would be new and different? And I gotta tell you that what's new and different today is I'm out of trees. I'm out of trees to put on my wall. We got our wall, right? All the way up to there yesterday. Moving along, well, here's the deal. This is my tree pile. Those two right there, those two are for the posts. Because they're big at the bottom. Ooh, let's go down. They're about eight and a half inches around at the base. So I use those bigger ones for my vertical posts. What we're gonna do today is cut down a bunch more wall logs. That's what I like to call them. And then there are a bunch of trees right behind the cabin there that are need to go down. And there's a lot right here and going this way all the way around. And I'm just gonna keep working my way around and opening things up a little bit and harvesting logs. So um, bring you guys along for the ride. <laughs>
Well, folks, <clears throat> that's all there is for the video today. And that's all there will be for this week. We did round up today. We got a bunch of these logs and we cut all the trees down. We harvested them all. Just uh, you watch these stumps get made. Be our new stack of logs for next week to start putting up on our wall and keep going on the cabin. I think there's enough logs here to finish that wall. So this has been a awesome week with you guys. I hope you get a like and subscribe. Stick with us. Keep along the journey. Keep on coming along the journey. Have a lot of fun with us and uh, always remember a day outside is a great day. Have a good one.